My name is Mark van Koningsveld. I'm manager of the Environmental Engineering Department at Van Oort, which is a large international dredging and marine contractor. I'm also a member of the EcoShape management team. EcoShape is the foundation that is responsible for running the Building with Nature innovation program. And finally, I work one day a week at Delft University of Technology. In this clip, I will show you how to develop a Building with Nature design and explain why it is important to transfer crucial design information between the phases of project development. As you know, there are four project development phases. Initiation, planning and design, construction and operation and maintenance. The degrees of freedom in your design choices reduce as the development process proceeds. Key to a Building with Nature design is the proactive utilization and provision of ecosystem services as an integral part of the engineering solution. Although there is room for improvement in every phase, the earlier the approach is embraced in the project development process, the greater its potential impact. Five steps for design can be followed to design hydraulic infrastructure to fit in its socio-economic and natural surroundings. Their application yields a conceptual design. This takes the form of a landscape sketch or an artist impression that qualitatively indicates the geographic location of economic functions and ecosystem services and the way these two are integrated. The five steps for design are Step 1. Understand the system, including ecosystem services, values and interests. Step 2. Identify realistic alternatives that use and provide ecosystem services. Step 3. Evaluate the qualities of each alternative and pre-select an integral solution. Step 4. Fine-tune the selected solution to its practical context. And step 5. Prepare the solution for implementation in the next project phase. To move from the design table to the real construction and building, you need to clarify objectives and explicate concepts. We call this objectification. With objectification we mean making the implicit explicit on the one hand and specifying clear objectives on the other, both with the aim to rationalize the design process. Just like the five steps for design, you have five steps for objectification. These steps are used to subdivide a conceptual design into separate yet interacting building blocks. These are then engineered individually to fulfill clearly defined objectives. And you should ensure that all building blocks together still meet the conceptual design objective. The five steps for objectification are based on the frame of reference approach, which is prescribed reading material. The objectification steps themselves are a bit abstract, but I will clarify them later with practical examples. The first step, step one. Define the strategic objective of the conceptual design and identify individual building blocks. Specifying the strategic objective of the conceptual design is one of the most influential steps. It determines the context of all next steps. Step two. For each building block, specify objectives, boundary conditions and performance indicators. It is important to specify operational objectives per individual building block. Note that the operational objectives, almost by definition, are an imperfect specification of the strategic objective. To make the step from abstract objectives to concrete technical designs, it is necessary to capture the essence of the operational objectives in what I call a quantitative state concept. This quantitative state concept can be used to iteratively develop the design so that it ultimately meets a predefined benchmark that indicates whether the operational objective is achieved. The first two steps take us from objectives down to engineered building blocks. The next three steps take us back up to the objectives. In these steps we check whether the resulting designs meet the earlier specified objectives. Step 3. Check if building blocks individually achieve their operational objectives. It ought to be possible to iteratively deliver a technical design that achieves the benchmark specified in the design procedure. If not, this provides a trigger to revise choices made in the previous steps. Step 4. Check if the building blocks collectively achieve the strategic objective as intended in the conceptual design. Even if building blocks meet its individual objective, that doesn't mean 
that all building blocks together meet the strategic objective. Remember that the operational objectives are an imperfect specification of the strategic objective. We check for it matches in this step. Step 5. Check how the final solution fits in the local governance context. Verifying to what extent the proposed solution is financially viable and checking whether the new design complies fully with existing laws and regulations are an important aspect of this step. If in steps 3, 4 and 5 we cannot reach a satisfactory solution, we have to get back to the design table. That could mean going back to steps 1 and 2 or ultimately revising the conceptual design altogether. The frame of reference is an important instrument in the objectification process. It will help you in the initiation and planning and design phases to define objectives, indicators, reference states, mechanisms for mitigation and evaluation procedures. In the construction phase, it helps you to steer unanticipated practical decisions that inevitably have to be made to maintain conformity with the original design objectives. While in the operation and maintenance phase, it helps you to design monitoring programs and maintenance measures that are closely tied to the original design objectives through the well-defined quantitative state concepts. The template and its regular review are important to prevent reduced effectiveness of the final solution or even failure of the solution to deliver its intended outcome. In summary, we have a project development process that is divided into phases. Within each phase, you have objectives and a certain degree of freedom. For each phase, you make a conceptual design. The objectification process helps you to detail this conceptual design. The frame of reference helps you to check whether the objectives are met. Now, to make the steps for design and how they are applied in each project a bit more clear, you can think of the project development phases for a port extension, such as the second mass vlakte here in Rotterdam. The initiation phase deals with a first definition of the problem or opportunity at hand and the scoping of potential solutions. When thinking of increasing the capacity for container transport, for example, you can imagine that this, in this phase you would still consider different locations for the expansion, like Rotterdam, Amsterdam or Antwerp. Where the initiation phase focuses on the problem definition and project scope, the more detailed planning and design phase deals with the developing of alternative strategies within this given scope and handles the selection of the preferred alternatives. You can imagine that in this phase you would focus on one location, example Rotterdam, and consider expansion options in land, near the coast or at sea. At the end of this phase you would have a preferred option and a design that is ready for tendering. The construction phase elaborates and discusses the project execution approach. Client and contractor would further specify the tender design into a detailed design ready for construction. The operation and maintenance phase may lead to optimization of aspects of the design to reduce life cycle cost. Note that moving through the phases, the degree of freedom gradually reduces. To make the steps for objectification a bit more clear, you can think of a project like the dike reinforcement of the Honsbosse and Petemer Sea Defence. In this project, the dike is transformed from a hard infrastructure to a soft, sandy dune landscape that offers the required safety levels. Part of the design was the delivery of a quite specific dune habitat. During the design process, the habitat objectives and related boundary conditions were specified. During construction, these boundary conditions are actually made. You can see that turning a neat design from the drawing board into actual reality is quite a step that involves all kinds of practical aspects related to available equipment, work methods used, etc. The objectification process helps to be very specific about the objective of the various building blocks and the design early on. This helps to make the appropriate choices during construction, but also to de design the right monitoring programs for the post-project monitoring. Now, you have learned about all steps involved in making a building with nature design and what it takes to turn a concept into reality. You should realize that a building with nature design is always custom made to fit in the local socio-economic and natural environment. Of course, some aspects are similar from project to project, but in most cases you need to investigate the local natural system for opportunities and invent new ways to seize them. 
The inclusion of ecosystem services as part of the solution requires you to have knowledge of the local ecology and how it develops, how it develops naturally and how it would develop in response to a design that you made. The other clips provide you with important information to help you on your way in this creative process. This process may sometimes be fun and challenging and sometimes tedious and frustrating. You need to be persistent and resourceful to turn your plans into a reality. If you succeed, you can help to make this world a better place. Thank you for your attention.